Hi everyone, uh, happy December. Um, I am coming to you today with my November book wrap up. I read eight books in the month of November. Um, I've grouped them together in a way that I think makes sense to me, uh, so we'll get stuck into it. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, it's an ebook that I got in the Haymarket book sale. The Haymarket books is like a publisher, they do lots of really, really good, like leftist uh, non fiction. I got this. Um, very very small poetry collection all about trans liberation written by H. Milt um, it's called On My Way to Liberation um, this is only 28 pages so it was a very small poetry collection um, I ended up giving it 3 stars um, I really wouldn't trust my judgement in terms of poetry I'm not very good, I'm not like a natural person who understands or can particularly write poetry or anything like that um, because I'm I'm very literal. <laughs> I'm not very good with like metaphors and imagery and stuff like that. But I didn't really vibe with it. Um, it wasn't particularly lyrical, um, but it was really good in terms of uh, being a really like succinct and emotional way to communicate what trans people feel um, at, at this current time at the moment in the US. Um, and I was like reading books um, from different experiences other than my own and yeah um so the first pairing of books that I will delve into today um are two queer female I guess like holiday romances um I've got both of them on ebook um one of them was an art and the other one was one of the books that I was really excited to read this year called Written in the Stars The Holiday Treatment which was the book that was um sent to me for review. I thought the chemistry between the two, between the lead character and the main love interest were really, was really really good. Um, they had lots of banter, it was very fun. Um, I did think there were like quite a lot of time jumps in there and also the ending was a bit weird. Um, I did think it was quite funny. Um, yeah, there was something, it was a bit flawed but it was good. It's set at Christmas, um, it's basically about this woman called Holly Holiday who um, comes from a very Christmassy town um, and then gets a job as someone who writes Christmas films um, for like a kind of a Hallmark style channel which is called Wifetime Network. <laughs> I really liked Holly, I thought she was great, I thought she was really funny and nice, like a nice person um, and her love interest is basically uh, kind of her boss but not really her boss um, she kind of becomes her boss after they get together um, and there's stuff in there about like workplace romance um, and that's like the main conflict in the book if you want like a nice light kind of fluffy romance I would say go for it I gave it three and a half stars I think the first part of the book was much stronger than the second half and I didn't think there relationship was particularly like the start bit was really good but I don't think that the progression of it was like particularly engaging um there was like a lot of conflict quite early on um external conflict but still in a similar vein I read Written in the Stars which is one I talked about in my books that I'm excited what whatever that tag was this is I yeah it's quite um it's kind of supposed to be like a bit of a spin on Pride and Prejudice, which, yeah, I, I think considering the number of like Pride and Prejudice rewrites and remakes, this is done in a really good way in that it's not like a direct retelling and it just kind of incorporates some of the aspects of the story. So you get Darcy who's like a, a bit of a snobby, stuck up, um, but like very um, introverted and kind of vulnerable person. Um, has got lots of walls built around her because of like something that's happened in her past um and then you also have l i should remember that because that's literally my name who is like the dizzy character and she's very like bubbly she also um owns like an astrology kind of instagram account like it's a, like a very popular one and she's working with darcy's brother um and incorporating that into a dating app and I loved the premise of that I really liked that kind of that sounded really interesting very much enemies to reluctantly acquaintances because they get themselves into a sticky situation 
uh, to we're bonding, <laughs> I guess, to like lovers, to dating, like in love kind of thing, which I liked as a progression. I thought that the ending was slightly abrupt. I also didn't think the, so. The trope is that they go on a date, um, and it's a very very bad date. But then they. Um, Darcy pretends it went really well to her brother who set her up on the date yeah um, because she doesn't want him to set up any more dates for him so they then kind of have to play on that um, and they are like oh we're going to fake date until the 31st of December and I don't think that trope was used well enough like I think it would have been nice to have like a proper rom-com ending um, with like using the New Year's as like a thing but it didn't really do that at all I liked the side conflict with Elle's family where there's like that conflict with her mother um, kind of wanting her to settle down and have like a proper job which is kind of a bit similar to um, Mrs Bennet in Pride and Prejudice and, and like Darcy kind of not like not sorting it out in the way that um you know happens in Pride and Prejudice but um kind of standing up for Elle I really liked that I thought that was really sweet um I was quite invested in the relationship I just thought the ending was a bit abrupt I feel like the ending could have been tweaked a bit the next section that I'll get on to is uh, a lesbian memoir um, the first one that I read um, was at One Life by Me Megan Rapina and my friends got me into women's soccer probably just earlier this year I've run with it I guess I love Megan Rapinoe um, mostly for like the activism that she's done and she's very like open about that in this book in a way that I think is really really like helpful and good um, she's a very confident person but or she's she's very she gives credit to people who have taught her things um, she has always made a cre made a point to credit um, Colin Kaepernick for um, taking a knee and the fact that he uh, while she was very much celebrated he was booted at the NFL a lot of the book is about that um, about her kneeling and about the repercussions that happen because of that because she's on the US women's national team um, and how she was like kept back from practicing with them and from starting and being subbed on and like playing games and stuff like that and I thought that was really interesting um, she also is like obviously there's stuff about her childhood and how she got into soccer um or football there's also some stuff about like her realizing she's gay um which was nice um I, it felt like a very refreshing memoir just because um she's very unapologetic um and I, that's good because i don't think she has that much to be apologetic about um and she's very open um and like honest and confident um and she seems to be the kind of person to be like, oh, you know, I just want to go to my grave without having any regrets about not doing something that I should have. Which I think, like, and she doesn't necessarily worry about things, about the repercussions of things, um, if she knows that, that what she's doing is right. Which I thought was great. Um, it also, because I'm a big Safi romantic, loved the stuff in here about her and Sue Bird, who are a power couple for the ages. Um, yeah, I thought they were... Oh, it was just cute. I love them. Um, so yeah, I would really recommend reading this. Um, I think she's really inspiring, mostly because she, she knows what she's doing. She knows who she is. She's confident in that. She sticks up for herself, and she also sticks up for other people. Um, and she's willing to learn. And I think that's great. Um, the second lesbian memoir that I read <laughs> this month <laughs> it was um, Not That I'd Kiss a Girl by Lil O'Brien. This is um, about a woman who grew up in the mid, like she was born in the mid 80s in quite a small conservative town in New Zealand and she discovered she was gay and was kicked out of the house um, when she was 18 or 19. Um, and yeah, I went into this kind of I didn't realise that she was older than me and I thought maybe it would be like not relatable but like I was interested to see how, how like the difference between like my experience and people I know's experience maybe like the experience of someone on the other side of the world who grew up in a very different kind of way um, I thought it was alright um, I thought it was an excellent portrayal of like a really complex family relationship so she's kind of 
not really mended her relationship with her parents but she's kind of learned to kind of forgive them and understand where they're coming from and I thought that was like an interesting thing. Most people I know um, are very open and accepting parents but of the people that I don't um, it's mostly about like cutting off all contact um, mostly for like self-preservation and I fully like support that um, and it's interesting to see a way in which in the way in which Lil kind of maintains a relationship with her parents because that she still needs their financial support she still wants to be um, in her sister's life um, and the way they kind of m not mend it but they kind of learn to live with the jagged edges kind of butting together um, her mother is very like oh you know what will people say about me um, having a gay daughter her father doesn't really stand stick up for her in face of her mother's like quite r like rampant and blatant homophobia I think the rest of the book was less interesting in terms of like she had lots of relationships with like straight or like bi curious women um, and felt very hurt by them which obviously is a rite of passage for many like gay women but um, it was a bit sad to read about in terms of it was so repetitive um, I also appreciated like the candor with what she talked about growing up um, like in terms of university <laughs> um, in terms of having a really rocky start to her 20s and also like her queer teenage years where she was obsessed with her, all of her like female best friends it was quite relatable <laughs> and um, I, yeah I like reading about stuff like that so I gave it three stars I thought it was like a mixed bag um, but yeah, it was good. I read a couple of books about race, I read Natives, um, I talked about starting this maybe last month, might have started the month before. Um, my brain has been a bit distracted, um, so although this is a very, this is an excellent book, I gave it five stars, um, I did find it a bit dense to read, but I think that was mostly my frame of mind. Um, it has a lot of information here, considering it is like 300 pages, it has so much information in here. Akala really, really packs it in. I really learnt a lot uh, reading this. Um, I particularly like chapters 4 and 5, which cover the history of slavery and also race and science um, in general. Um, the history of the British Empire, the whole like, Britain ended slavery first thing, which is like total BS. I didn't realise quite how much BS it was, but it is complete BS. Um, and also like the collective amnesia and like propaganda around our relationship with race and class um, and empire today um, in terms of like education, media and stuff like that I really enjoyed this, it was really good I would really really recommend picking up the book I read on race or uh, the second book I read on race um, this month was Whites um, on Race and Other Falsehoods by Otago Uragba this is a fantastic teeny little book it is an essay all about um, white people and white people in every context of the word from the racists to the anti-racists this was excellent this was really valuable for me to read to be quite honest um, I do think as white people we need to not only read books about race but we need to enact anti-racism in really deep and meaningful ways in our lives and this really talks about that it centers whiteness um, in a way that I hadn't really thought of before um, and racism as you know whiteness we don't we need to abolish whiteness as a concept obviously not white people but we need to abolish whiteness because whiteness is where white supremacy lies and whiteness is the reason why racism exists black people can't abolish whiteness by themselves white people also need to step up and do the same thing um, just in rel relinquishing our power in terms of race basically there's a history in this country and other countries in which um, people who are white know that even if you're pushed to the bo bottom rung on the ladder of class and everything else um, you will still be white and that's something that's power you still have and I think it's important to point out that that is the power that we need to let go of in order to accomplish anything in 
anti-racism. So yeah, I thought this was excellent. I truly recommend picking it up. You know, a, maybe a Christmas stocking filler for you and your loved ones. The last book that I read in November was What We Don't Talk About When We Talk About That by Aubrey Gordon. I was really excited to read this. I was not disappointed. This book um, is a comprehensive guide to anti-fat bias very specifically. Um, so we are not talking about body positivity here. We are talking about all the ways in which fat people um, experience discrimination. Specifically in the US is what this book talk about, talks about, but obviously it's very relevant over here in the UK. The ways in which fat people experience bias, so aeroplane seats, um, <laughs> clothing sizes, concern for your health um, by people who are thin, um, healthcare professionals, just an complete anti-fat bias in the media and otherwise. Um, I thought this was excellent. I learned a lot. Um, I especially learned a lot about how the difference between thin people and by thin people um, I mostly mean like straight sized people, so people who can easily buy um, clothes in any store in the UK, even if you don't necessarily think of yourself as thin, that is how um, Orby Gordon defines thin. Um, it means you are not fat in a way that discriminates against you very systematically. Although obviously you have the right to feel insecure about your body. Um, I, you know, I'm sure everyone does, as even if you are a supermodel, <laughs> it's not the same as being discriminated against systematically um, at all. They are two separate things. Um, it also has stuff about the body positivity movement and how that has been co-opted to kind of reassure thin people that they can have stomachs <laughs> um, as opposed to like tackling discrimination that really affects fat people's lives. In terms of there have been several medical studies about the correlation between like health and fatness caused by anti-fat bias so like um, the ways in which like discrimination can produce cortisol and stress in your body versus um, actually being because of your weight is also well, the healthcare professionals are discriminate like do discriminate against fat people um, and that can also lead to like late cancer diagnoses so yeah um there's a lot of stuff in here that's really good i would also really recommend Aubrey Gordon's podcast um called maintenance phase um and especially the anti-fat bias episode in that also diet culture is bad diets never work they work for about five percent of people um everyone else you gain the weight back and then probably put more on it can also really severely affect your metabolism and they just shouldn't be a thing um i think i think some people know that but i think more people need to know that because obviously lots of people do still go on diets um diet culture is such like a side effect of capitalism and just rampant capitalism um profiting off of people wanting to feel better about themselves um in ways that society really pushes on us um when actually it's not doing anyone any good. I would say read this book. I am currently reading three books at the moment. I am reading The Ages of Failing Capitalism, Democracy May Not Exist, and American Overdose. You know, Christmassy books. Uh, I hope you all also had a great reading month in November, and if not, I hope it picks up in December. Um, have a really lovely week.